You guys wanted it and now you're getting it. This is gonna be one gigantic go tanks guide. This is gonna go through a bunch of different aspects of the character, uh, his buttons, his special, his like general game plan, where to put him on a team. And there's gonna be timestamps in the description for each section. So if you wanna just focus on one thing, feel free to just skip around. But before I talk about any of that, I really just wanna talk about the philosophy for playing go tanks. Now, in my opinion, the best thing about go tanks and the reason why you should play him, the main thing he adds to the team, is this. If you do not know how to do Ghost Soki, you are getting so much less out of the character than you would otherwise. You are not playing the whole character. In my opinion, being able to do Ghost Soki is the biggest necessity for playing Gotenks. And honestly, it's... It's not that hard. I promise you. I really promise you. Some people overcomplicate it. Dude, it's- I swear it's like simple. Okay, but first I want to talk about all of Gotenks' buttons. Okay, so first off, 5L is pretty standard. It is minus three, which is just a good stagger tool. Initially, you might think that this button has a range problem. It's actually not that bad in my opinion. Um, it's not anything to write home about, but some of his other buttons are much bigger culprits of having a range issue. Next up, 5LL. Again, this isn't really anything special. It's minus 5, so it's technically safe on block, but it's not an amazing stagger tool. And yes, um, as of the most recent patch, Gotenks no longer has his uh, auto combo bug where you'll accidentally get his full auto combo sometimes, so. Which honestly was not that big of a deal. Really weird, I've seen some people be like, oh my god, thank god Gotenks isn't bugged anymore, I can finally play him. I- dude, I promise you, it was not that big of a deal, you could have played Gotenks before that, but okay, anyway. Next up is his 5LLL, his full auto combo. Um, two main interesting things about this. One, as you can see, you're actually airborne, and you are actionable after this. So you can dash forward, you can do a move. The other thing though that you might notice is that you are zero on block. So you recover from this move at the exact same time as your opponent recovers from block stun. There's nothing inherently useful about that, but it is not like a normal thing for a move to be zero on block like that. Now, even though you're considered airborne at the end of this, if you cancel this into a special move at the very start, you'll actually still be considered grounded. So if I do something like this, you'll see I'm doing my ground Beyblade instead of my air Beyblade, which is just something pretty important for a lot of Gotenks combos, especially for the fact that now you can do even more damage with this by using the new beam buffs. Okay, next up is 2L. Now, whereas 5L has pretty decent range, um, 2L has a little bit more pronounced of a range problem. It'll hit from a little less range where 5L hits, and that's mainly because 5L, as you can see, lunges Gotenks forward slightly. 2L just has him in the same position, but you know, Gotenks does have a 2L low, fortunately. Next is 5M. This launches a decent amount, but just compared to some of the other moves in the game, it it's really not anything special. It is decently fast though at 9 frames of startup, and it is safe on block. However, since the hitbox lingers so long, you can actually change the frame data on this by quite a lot. If you space this perfectly, you can actually end up being um, 0 on block. There we go. This isn't the most useful thing. It would be a lot better if Gotenks could like backdash in 5M, but he cannot. Next up is 2M. Um, this is a decent lunge tool, and 2M is notable for being Gotenks' main form of anti-reflect. As you can see here, I'll do 5L in 2M, and even if they reflect me, I am still stuck to them. Um, this also works sometimes with 2L into 2M, but I find personally that 5L into 2M is just a lot more consistent because if you're not like point blank from them, uh, a lot of the times 2L into 2M will whiff, but 5L into 2M will be a lot more consistent. There's still distances like from max max range where it won't connect, but it'll be a lot more consistent. Next up we have 5H. Um, this move lunges you decently far, again it's nothing like 
amazing compared to some of the other characters in the game, but it is pretty decent range. What's interesting though about this move is you can actually charge it up for up to 40 frames. If you charge this up, it has very different properties on hit and on block. On block, as you can see, it's actually plus one, which initially you might think that's really good. It's not that amazing, mainly because Gotenks' 5L does not have the range to hit after doing this, which is really unfortunate because if he did, that would make the move like so much more useful. This is for most cases, but in some cases you actually can make it to where your 5L will connect if you hit it from super far away. But just the simple fact that you have to charge this move so heavily makes this not a good idea. To do it from this far away, this has over 40 frames of startup. So you're gonna explode if you do this. And on hit, this also has a big difference where the non-charged version just acts like a normal 5H, they go flying and then bounce off the wall. Whereas the charged version will actually bounce them back towards you. And you can actually convert off of this the window can be pretty tight, but you can combo off of this without using super dash or anything. And you get extremely good damage off of this. In fact, if you hit someone with this, more times than not, you can actually just kill them. Just because the initial hit does so much damage. That was a fairly simple combo, and this does more than enough damage for them to die. Now you might be saying to yourself, isn't that extremely rare to be able to get 5H fully charged up? It is pretty rare, but not as rare as you might think. And that is because no matter what move you use, if you start charging 5H after, it is the perfect timing to hit reflect. But honestly, everything I just showed you is kind of boring. Let me show you guys the secret most useful thing about this move. This is actually, like, kind of crazy, okay? So obviously, this move has such a big gap when you fully charge it up. And initially, you would think that's a big weakness, right? Like, it would be better if the move just instantly hit them, like, on frame 30 or whatever. But since this move takes so long to hit your opponent, it actually has a special super useful property. If you use your assists, and then fully charge this move, because there is such a big gap, your assist will start to recharge while you're still pressuring someone, which is such a useful tool for just like resetting your pressure with something that is also extremely threatening and also something that's not linear. Like if they think they can get out of this because you're going to stagger it, you can release this at any point. You only get the stronger properties of this move if you charge it fully, but just to like psych someone out, you know, like they think they're going to be able to get out of this and then you just do it instantly. Okay, I'm doing it instantly. Oh, now I charge it fully. You can't tell that I'm charging it fully until I charge it fully. It's like Bardock Tyrant Lancer, you know, I think that's the name of the move. But yes, I can't stress how many times I have just been using my assists and then stringing Gotenks pressure and I just charge 5H one time and now I'm getting my assists back. Like that is so useful. Okay, but anyways, next is uh, his 2H. Now really, I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with this move. This move is useful for some things. Um, obviously, as you can see, it will hit people on the opposite side of you, which is decent for hitting uh, vanishes and some other things like someone crosses you up and you do this. It can hit a lot of the time, but this move also has a very big blind spot behind it and it has a lot of recovery. So there are a lot of times, I'm just telling you guys, I'm just telling you guys, someone will super dash at you and it'll be like this weird angle and they will go behind you and your 2H will whiff and they will punish you. Very frustrating. It doesn't happen often, okay? Most of the time this move works normally, but it does happen sometimes. And I just need to clear that out. But other than that, this is a pretty standard 2H. Um, 
It's extremely unsafe, so you're gonna have to cancel this into something, but that is never gonna be a problem for Gotenks, because he has great moves to cancel into. One notable thing about this is it leaves you airborne, but unlike something like your full auto combo, it leaves you airborne basically right next to your opponent. Something I like using this for is Sparking Mix, where I will go to someone and 2H and then instantly dash over them and hit them with a cross up. Or instead of that, you could maybe jump back and hit them with a key blast on the same side just to reset your pressure. But yes, Gotenks 2H has its strengths and weaknesses. Next up, his key blast. Uh, pretty normal key blast, somewhat useful for resetting your pressure. It's nothing to write home about. It's just a standard key blast, shoots four of them. This move isn't really useful anywhere in combos. As far as I know, the only like somewhat Interesting thing about this is you can actually use this to get a meaty 5H. Now, what does that look like? Let me show you. If you do 2M into all four hits of your Key Blast, it'll pop them up slightly. And if you do that into 5H, you might see it hits them a little bit later than it would normally. And what this allows is you to easily just confirm off of your 5H with another move, which is cool. But Gotenks just has such good corner combos that this is basically never useful. Which is unfortunate because I think it's really cool. But yeah, it's you're never going to use this. Next up is Gotenks' air moves. First up, JL. Really, really good move for the most part. It has one specific weakness that I want to talk about. But just to show you guys, this move is three hitting. And if you get someone with even one of these, Gotenks just sticks to your opponent. This is so useful. You can really pull someone to the ground super easily with this. And honestly, I wanna say that's kind of something that Gotenks is like decently good at is sticking to you. He really can just stick to you, but we'll talk about that more later. Uh, this move is a high and all three hits of this are counted as highs. So if someone is crouch blocking and you hit them with any hit of this, they'll have to block high. But once you hit them with one of the hits of punches, all the other hits will now be considered mids. So your opponent only has to block one hit high, which you know, be nice if some other characters had that same problem. Now, one of the weaknesses that I really want to speak about for this move, and this ties into a lot of Gotenks' toolkit, with a lot of characters J5L, you can consistently snipe out Super Dash wherever your opponent is on screen. But with Gotenks, this is just very inconsistent. There will be times where this works fine, and there will be times where the opponent will just super dash through your punches. And this can be really irritating um, because it's just like an inconsistent tool, honestly. And Gotenks already, in my opinion, doesn't have amazing anti-airs. So this is just another thing that contributes towards that. In my opinion, Gotenks has somewhat of a hard time fighting Super Dash. So what I suggest, this is what I do, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it's been really useful for me. Instead of doing that, I will focus on trying to reverse a level 3, a Super Dash, which is completely consistent and honestly, you have more time to react with that than you would any other button because this is frame 1 invincible. But obviously, you're not always going to have access to level 3. So what else I would suggest is to incorporate a decent amount of instant backdashing with Gotenks. Just so that you're always ready to snipe out a 2H. Because if you're in the air, hitting 2H can be really inconsistent. Next up, Gotenks' is JM. Um, this move is pretty useful. It can cross up your opponent. Decently consistently, if you are point blank and they are crouching, it's not going to work like that. But if you're just a little bit far out, you are going to be able to hit them. So most of the time, you'll do this off of like a jump in or you'll call an assist and then cross them up. But as far as the move goes, it doesn't really have any incredibly special properties. Although you can, in a lot of situations, use JM as your tool to try to air to air someone. And then from there, just go into your lights because they're so good at dragging your opponent down with you. Lastly, Gotenks is JH. Um, I brought out Janimba to show something really interesting about this move. It actually has an extremely large hitbox below it. Um, as you can see, if I'm right next to Janimba, 
I can just jump and JH, and it'll still hit him. You can do some kind of wonky stuff with this. Like, you can actually cross people up sometimes, just because the hitbox is so far below Gotenks. Or if you like dash over someone and dash back, you can either hit them on the opposite side. Is that useful? Eh, not really, but okay. And then last of the normals, we have a J5S. Um, an amazing move, but a dangerous move. This is a really cool neutral tool, mainly because even if someone guards this and they super dash off of it instantly, you can still hit them out of super dash with just your normals. But also, if you're point blank against your opponent, this isn't going to be the case. If you are slightly far away, this actually jails into your normals. You'll see from a far enough distance, I can even do 5M and there's nothing Jinimba can do besides reflect here. And one useful thing is after you do this, you can backdash and do it again just as a way to reset the situation. And if they reflect this first key blast, they're actually just gonna get hit by the second key blast. And if they get hit by either of them, Gotenks can get a full combo off of this. But you don't even have to do that. You could just hit someone on the ground for reflecting this and they pretty much die. Do be careful though, because if you're just doing this in the air, your opponent might just want to start super dashing you. And not only can they super dash just around your key blast so you can't cancel, um, as we just talked about, Gotenks doesn't have the strongest tools for fighting super dash. So if you're just in the air, it might be a little hard for you to check them for trying to super dash you, you know? One other thing about this move, as you can see, it pops you slightly into the air after you do it. Now what I'm gonna say is gonna be useful for some of you who want to utilize this. As far as making your own rejumps goes, this can be useful because it pops you up very slightly. So situations where I just need a little bit more height, I can just use this and now I'm going to be the perfect height for whatever rejump I want. Now what do I mean making your own rejumps? Well, Gotenks does have a lot of set rejumps, but there are a lot of situations where you might want to have your own rejump, especially for some character synergies. You might find a combo where you tag one character into Gotenks and there's no set rejump for what you're doing. You have to create your own. So this can be just a useful tool for getting like a more precise height in the rejump. Now, Gotenks' special moves are interesting. There are not like any other character's special moves in the game because he can actually cancel his special moves into other special moves. And he can do this on hit or on whiff which is really incredible because he can really manipulate the properties of his special moves because he has like things like this big key blast move but since he can cancel it into other specials he can make it a key blast that beats super dash he just like picks off properties of certain special moves and gives it to other special moves but first we have this his 236 series the quarter circle forward his miracle punches the light version of this is i want to say a pretty decent block string ender but gotenks almost never ends his block strings on his own but this move is very safe on block it is minus two an interesting thing to note about the miracle punches series is all three of them will beat super dash and I talked about how Gotenks is a little bit weaker at fighting Super Dash in the air. These are gonna be your main tool to combat them. Unfortunately, they're not super fast, so it can be extremely difficult to hit them on reaction, but they are there as counterplay. Most of the time when I use them, I'm not reacting to Super Dash, I'm just like covering that my opponent might Super Dash here. Another thing about these moves is they do a decent amount of chip damage. And you have to remember that Gotenks can cancel special moves into other special moves. So he can do a lot of chip damage just with his Miracle Punches series. And another thing interesting about Miracle Punches is they carry momentum super well. So if you just do Miracle Punches, you'll see they cover decent amount of distance. But if I dash, before I do Miracle Punches, all of a sudden they are so much faster and they cover basically the full screen now. Now, okay, medium Miracle Punches. This is kind of a weird one. If you'll see, this move is really plus on block. If you hit someone with this move and they guard it, 
you can take your turn back, like almost guaranteed. But you'll see the problem with this move is there is a big gap between doing it and having it hit your opponent. And because all the Miracle Punches series are considered heavies, your opponent has a lot of time to react with a 2H for this. But something really, really important that I want to bring up to everyone. Right now, if I do this move against Janimba, there will be a giant gap where he can 2H me. But if Janimba is standing here, there is not going to be a single gap in the move. Which means if I see like that I'm doing some block string and I see Janimba standing, if I do this move, there is nothing he can do. He has to switch back to crouch blocking. In my opinion, this is such an important thing that you should keep in mind. If you see someone stand blocking after you finish your pressure, you can go into medium punches so much more easily. Now, this is still size dependent because uh, normal size characters will still have a gap in the move, but it is not nearly as long because if they are not crouching, they will also get hit by the startup of this move. Just something to keep in mind when you're doing medium punches that if your opponent is stand blocking, they will have so much harder of a time punishing this. But funny thing about that last move we just talked about, its weakness is completely negated if you just do heavy miracle punches. This move is plus one on block, which is already crazy enough because it's a special move that's plus, and you can jail into this move. So you can jail into being plus. But this move is even crazier because we just talked about the fact that Gotenks can cancel his special moves into other special moves. So now any move that I do, that I just hit someone with, now I can turn it into a special move that is plus on block. I can make any of my special moves plus on block. That is incredible. This move is such a big part of Gotenks' game plan, please keep it in mind. This is another thing that makes Gotenks so sticky. You have to really be aware of when it's your turn and when Gotenks is just gonna reset his pressure. Because if I just do this string, it's not threatening, right? I'm not trying to mix you here. But when is it your turn? It is so dangerous to try to take your turn against Gotenks because he just always has a way of making it his turn again. Next up, we have the 214 series, Gotenks' Beyblades. Uh, important thing about these moves, they are all immune to key blasts. So uh, the other ones, like the light and the medium, are gonna be immune to key blasts on frame four. But the EX version is actually gonna be immune to key blasts on frame one, which is really useful because there are a lot of setups that rely on a meaty key blast in order to keep you locked down. And Gotenks can challenge them in ways that a lot of other characters can't challenge them. Sometimes I will use this as a Lariat move just to get over to the opponent. And again, you can change the properties of this at any point. So you can make this plus on block. And if you're worried about your opponent like shooting a key blast at you or something, you can use this to just go right through it. But in my opinion, the better version of this move to use as like a lariat is the heavy version. But we'll talk about that later. First off, an important thing about your air light Beyblade is that it's your main tool for rejump combos. I'll talk about rejump combos later, but just know that this move is what makes every single rejump combo work. Now, an interesting thing about this move is it hits at a really nice angle for hitting someone same side. So if I'm next to someone and I'm crossing them up, they're not gonna be able to react to whether I'm doing a same side Beyblade or a cross up medium. But obviously, the best same side mix-ups are from characters that have key blasts and beams because those cannot be beaten by 2H. So even if I'm trying to mix up my opponent, it doesn't matter if they just react to what I'm doing with a 2H because that will hit either side of what I'm doing. Next up, Medium Beyblade. Uh, this move in particular can be really useful for hitting someone out of the air, especially because you can go from medium Beyblade into light Beyblade and just drag someone from the air to the ground. And what's useful about this is if you chain medium into light against an opponent who is airborne in the corner and you do it fast enough, you'll see you will actually be plus on block. And this can be useful because if you're covering tech options with this, then if someone up techs, you're gonna be plus on block by the time you hit the ground. And 
Now that Gotenks has had the change to his Die Die Missile Barrage, you can actually go from medium Beyblade into light missiles into light Beyblade. And why this is useful is because if someone is just grounded and you do this, now you have reset your special cancels and you can cancel from light Beyblade into being plus on block, which is amazing. That's really, really good. Again, I'll talk about the cancels soon, but just know that that sequence is really good. Especially because even if someone super dashes those uh, missiles, they're still just gonna get hit by the Beyblade. So there's basically nothing they can do except air guard cancel. Now that air guard cancel is a thing, they can air guard cancel. Really only a mechanic that fights Gotenks. On hit, uh, medium Beyblade is notable for both the grounded version being a good method of starting big long combos, but more importantly, the grounded version launches them perfectly in a position where you can jump back and get heavy, and now you are in the perfect position to get Ghost Oki. Medium Beyblade is one of your main tools for going into Ghost Oki in the corner. And lastly, EX Beyblade. This is such an amazing and incredible move. I actually want to give it its own section so I can talk about it in full. It's amazing. It's like, this move is crazy. And then we have Gotenks' Beam, his Vengeful Shout. 236S, this move can be done either on the ground or in the air. And this move also has the ability to be canceled if you just hold the move. Now, as far as beams go, I'm sure you know, um, good zoning tools, useful that Gotenks has an air version too. Uh, and Gotenks has the same universal changes to where you can super dash from this at full screen. But something interesting about this move, if you'll see, the grounded version actually leaves you airborne. We'll see I'm in the air and I'm even actionable after this. I can do a move. This is for both the beam and just the shout cancel. However, the airborne version of this does not change your position at all. And what this means is you can actually do a beam lower to the ground if you just tiger knee it than if you were to do your actual grounded beam. Doing an air beam is the lowest possible beam that you can do. And throughout the entirety of Gotenks' light Beyblade, he's considered airborne until the very last hit of it. But he's also just slightly off the ground. And what this is useful for is corner combos now can have Gotenks do light Beyblade and then his beam. And because he is so close to the ground, and Beam has had increased hit stun, he can get a combo off of this. And what this means is an entire section of Gotenks' rejump combos have kind of been deleted because now you can do stuff like this and you don't even have to worry about the height that you're at. You can just get a rejump combo, which has just made a lot of Gotenks' corner combos so much easier. Now, as far as the shout cancel goes, there is really no set way to use this move. It's not like an attack. This is just a stall. It holds your position. So I encourage you guys to be creative with this move. Use it in like weird places that your opponent wouldn't expect. Important to note though, this does have seven frames of landing lag. So if you use this, you are not going to be able to hit someone with a low or mix them up naturally, you're gonna have too much lag. And this can also be dangerous for if you're just doing it and then someone snipes your landing. There's basically nothing you can do because you're in lag. But obviously, you're not gonna be stuck in lag. Like, there are ways to mitigate this. But it is important to keep in mind that weakness of the move. And then we have Die Die Missile Barrage. Now, if I made this guide before the most recent patch came out, this would have been completely different. I would have been like, this move, you should never use it in neutral ever because you will get smoked and there will be nothing that you can do except, say, reversal level three if you react to someone super dashing. I would have been like, this move is only combo filler where you use it and you tag into another character and do some cool extra damage at the end of your combo. But that is no longer the case. Now you can cancel this move into other special moves. Most of them aren't like super important, but the main one in neutral is Miracle Punches. The fact that you can cancel this into Miracle Punches now 
is so useful. Especially because on block, if you're close enough, this just jails into Miracle Punches. So whether your opponent super dashes at you, or your opponent just takes this, it's good for you. It's so much better for you now. I cannot stress how amazing that change was for Gotenks. But not only that, Gotenks can also use this move in combos now to get a lot more damage than he would before. Now, one little secret technique for Bidden Jutsu that I want to show you guys. Moves that take a really long time to complete on block have a really interesting property. I use this move as a somewhat safe way of special tagging out into another character. What's really interesting about tagging into another character, when you do it, the character that you tag from basically like doesn't exist anymore. I don't know how else to put it. They like don't exist, but they still have a hitbox. So if I were to tag instantly out of Die Die Missile Barrage, even if my opponent sparks, it will not get rid of Gotenks. You cannot get rid of a character after they have already tagged out. This is the same thing for any of Gotenks' special moves. For his Beyblades, whichever version you use. And this is useful because you can use this as a safe tag out method. And your opponent can't spark. Even if they were to guard cancel, Gotenks still would not go away. But anyways, even with all that being said, this move is still better than anything else at allowing amazing tag routes. Just because the move takes so long, there are certain things that you can do with it that are super useful, including things like multi-supers. Like if you were playing Z Broly, you could do his slow level three, or Zamasu famously can tag in here and get his multi-super, or a lot of characters just have insane damage off of uh, that command normal. Baby in particular gets so much damage at the end of combos with that specific string that I just showed you. And last of all, we have a bit of an interesting move. This move, Galactic Donuts. You know, I feel like there might be unused potential with this move. First of all, it is plus five on block. Honestly, I. I'm pretty sure Gotenks has more moves in the game that are plus on block than any other character. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he does. But anyways, this is plus on block, but it's kind of outshined by the fact that Gotenks can just gaplessly make himself plus on block without having to guess as to whether your opponent is gonna swing back at you or jump out of your pressure or anything like that. But it is there, so use it if you think it should be used. As far as neutral application, I personally haven't found a lot of useful situations for this. The only one useful situation for this that I have found is uh, Gotenks versus Zamasu. If Zamasu is just flying up in the air and trying to ignore you, you can do this move and it tracks anywhere on screen and it's kind of useful. That's the only neutral use I found for this. It also has a uh, extra thing where if you hold up after you do this move, the donut will go up. Dude, I don't know. I'm sure there's something this is useful for, but I have not found it. It's it's really whatever. This move is useful for combos though. Um, and one thing in particular that I want to point out is this move, when you hit it, it plays like this little animation. And while it plays the animation, your opponent is actually invincible, which is really useful for Ghost Oki because if your opponent gets hit, you can use this to make your last ghost whiff. And that's important because uh, if your ghost hits, it basically just starts scaling the combo so much more and you don't build meter anymore. So this is just a useful tool to negate that. Okay, now I just wanna talk about the different ways in which you can cancel special moves into other special moves. Uh, first of all, just to clear up, you cannot ever cancel any special move into Galactic Donuts. So there are two different versions of canceling special moves that Gotenks has. One uses punches and his Beyblade. If you use these moves, you can just cancel into another move on whiff. Um, that's the basic version that Gotenks has been using for so long, and it's not that complicated. Cancel into Beam, cancel into Die Die Missile Barrage, cancel into Punches, or cancel into Beyblade. Hit or whiff 
Those are your main ways of going from one to the other. But now, Gotenks can cancel from Dai Dai Missile Barrage into other moves. And what's interesting is this counts as a separate cancel window from the other cancels of Punches and Beyblade. Now, the main difference from this one is this you cannot cancel on with. You have to actually connect on block or hit in order to cancel this move. But this counts as a separate tree from your other cancels. And not only is it separate, if you cancel into Dai Dai Missile Barrage, it will reset your cancel window. So normally where you can only cancel from one move into another move, if you instead cancel into Dai Dai Missile Barrage, now you can cancel into uh, another move from there. And because it's reset, you can cancel again into another special move. Now you can't cancel into Dai Dai Missile Barrage more than once in a special move chain, but this is just a one-time use of resetting your special moves, which can be useful in a lot of situations. The main one is chip damage. You can get a ton of chip damage by canceling punches into Missile Barrage, into punches, into EX punches. And after you do that, you're gonna be plus on block. And you know what that means? It means you can do it just again. Punches, in a die-die muscle barrage, in a punches, in a punches. And you're doing so much chip damage on your opponent. Really interesting, chip damage is not really a thing in this game. But now it kind of is in my opinion. Like Gotenks really can use this to his advantage. Another interesting thing is if you cancel from uh, something like EX Beyblade into any move, there is going to be a gap that your opponent can punish you for. But if you cancel into Dai Dai Missile Barrage, there will be no gap. And since you can cancel from Missile Barrage into punches and leave no gap, you can basically just be so much safer while still applying pressure. Now your opponent can reflect the Missile Barrage, but it just adds another layer that your opponent has to take into account. Okay, now finally, we get to Gotenks' supers. Now, his main super is just a barrage of ghosts that hits full screen, and this move doesn't do amazing damage. That's one thing in particular about Gotenks. His supers don't do that much damage, but I, I mean, in my opinion, like, boohoo, you know? Like, what a weakness to have. Now, one interesting thing about this super, it actually takes so long to complete that it can actually give a lot of other characters multi-supers which can be useful in some situations because it allows you to not have to guess as to whether you need two bars or three bars to kill like if i am in a situation where i'm not sure if i need two bars to kill or three bars to kill i can just multi-super like this if it kills naturally it kills naturally but if i need an extra super in order to kill it's no problem I can just do an extra super at the end of my other two supers, and I don't have to guess anymore. It's just a useful tool for being meter optimal. Now, Gotenks' second level one super is the ghosts. Now, again, and you probably expected this, but the ghosts are gonna have their entire own section because they are super important, probably the most important part of Gotenks. Now, on to Gotenks level three. Um, interesting thing about this super, I believe, I'm not sure, I think it might have the longest super animation of any level 3 in the entire game. I think, I could be wrong about that. Now, this can be a big weakness when fighting an opponent who is in sparking, because it can be very hard for your super to kill your opponent when they are just constantly recovering blue life. But, this can also be a strength if you're fighting an opponent in sparking because this move takes so long to complete that it burns sparking time so well. Sometimes I suggest doing this move just to burn more sparking time on your opponent, even DHCing into this move. It can be a really useful tool to just lose that resource on their part. Now, amazing thing about Gotenks level three. Gotenks does not only have amazing level one mix, he also has an amazing level three mix. And this is because Gotenks can actually get a left-right by using his EX Beyblade. And I'm going to show you guys right now. You do EX Beyblade, and then cross your opponent up. Now this does require 
a decent amount of practice to get consistently, but you can very easily get it consistently. I'll talk more about it in the EX Beyblade section, but just know this is super useful, especially because this, unlike Ghost Oki, is something you can just DHC to. If you have a character that can take your opponent out of the corner, you can just DHC into Gotenks level 3, and now you've gotten a mix-up. This is really incredible. Gotenks has two amazing ways of getting good Oki. One requires a little more precision, but less resource, and one requires a, a lot less precision, but costs three bars, three and a half bars. You have to spend an extra half bar to mix them with EX Beyblade. Okay, now I really want to have a whole section where I talk about EX Beyblade. In my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me, this is Gotenks' second strongest tool besides just Ghost Oki. The fact that he has this highly maneuverable, completely controllable move that has a constant hitbox is insane. This move is just so versatile because you have full control over it. It's not like a linear move. It allows for a lot of player expression, in my opinion. Now, unlike Super Dash as an approach option that can just be reacted to with 2H, if you do EX Beyblade as an approach option and someone tries to 2H, you can just bait it out in multiple ways too. You can do something like that, a beam. You can do EX punches to try to bait it out. You can literally just maneuver around the 2H and hit them on the opposite side. And one thing I really, really wanna stress is the cross-up potential of this move is insane. If I am in a position like this and I'm accurate enough, I can cross Beerus up like instantaneously from the other side. I think this is really insane for the move, like really, really insane. Because while you are traveling to the opposite side, you're already hitting your opponent. You can call me crazy or like say I'm overhyping this move. In my opinion, this reminds me of uh, Kid Boo's old ball that would hit you on the way over to the other side. Like, the thing that everyone said was super broken. This really reminds me of that. Because you can do the same thing. You can hit someone on the way over to the opposite side. The only thing with this move is it really requires practice and precision and having good EX Beyblade control. Honestly, if you ask me, this is a more difficult tool to master than Ghost Oki. Ghost Oki is just like a set system that you need to learn. But it kind of does not require creativity, in my opinion. In my opinion. It's just a game plan. Ghost Oki is just a flowchart that you memorize. EX Beyblade is true player expression. And there is not a flowchart on how to use EX Beyblade. You have to just do stuff and be smart about what you're doing and have good control and good decision making. And that's all. But by the very nature of this not only having full 360 degree movement, but also you being able to cancel this into multiple other special moves at any point in the move, including a fake out, a full screen beam, a move that is plus on block and beat super dash, and a move that can reset your cancel window into these other moves. There's so much, there's just, there's like, I've said it before, but this move is the future of Gotenks. This is where people are gonna get most of their like random crazy stuff from, I promise. Now, the main weakness of this move, in my opinion, is that it loses to Super Dash, and it has a really hard time combating Super Dash. It can combat Super Dash because you can do things like uh, your Miracle Punches, and that beats Super Dash. But you have to be really quick doing that or doing your beam because they don't have that fast of startup when you're canceling like this. Something I do want to bring up though, and this is something special. Like, I, I haven't seen people talk about this, but this is really special. Now that Gotenks can cancel his Die Die Missile Barrage on whip, into Vanish. You can do that on whiff. You can use that a little bit to try to get yourself out of dodge if someone super dashes at you. If you're using EX Beyblade and you don't think you're gonna have time to hit someone out of this, you can instantly 
cancel into Dai Dai Missile Barrage, and then instantly cancel that Dai Dai Missile Barrage into a Vanish. Like we talked about, Gotenks can give the properties of his special moves to other special moves. So now, he can let himself vanish after doing EX Beyblade. Now, I don't, I don't know how to like set it up in recording, but if someone super dashes at you and you just vanish it, they can dash over towards you and get a punish off of this. So this isn't super useful when you're doing it normally, but if you are in sparking and you do EX Beyblade, now Gotenks has a way to be safe off of this. He never used to have that before, but now he does, which is, it's something. Like, it would be cool if he had like a super consistent way to be safe normally without being in sparking. But the fact that he has a new way to mitigate his weakness is awesome. It's like something new for Gotenks, right? But if you can't do any of that, um, the thing that I would suggest more than anything else, if you want to try to combat Super Dash, the biggest thing that I could suggest is if someone Super Dashes at you, just keep flying up and backwards. You want to do this because you want them to get hit by the very last hit. When Gotenks throws out that hit of EX Beyblade, that is your one chance to hit someone for trying to super dash at you. Again, this won't work all the time. There will be a lot of situations where they'll just hit you before you can do anything like that. But if you are flying up and backwards and you see someone super dash at you, it's already too late. Like you can't cancel into a move fast enough to beat that. I've wondered for a long time if Gotenks could have a way of just like, like maneuvering around super dash you can do this sometimes if you just cross someone up from super dashing underneath you but a lot of times the opponent isn't going to be directly underneath you they're going to be like kind of diagonal towards you just back up as much as you can if someone super dashes at you because it's already too late you can't cancel it the only thing that you could do is uh, this die die missile barrage into vanish cancel that's kind of useful, and I'm sure it'll catch like some people off guard, but it is not a consistent way of beating this. But do not try to cancel into punches or your beam on reaction to someone super dashing. You will not have enough time. You have to do it either preemptively or you just keep retreating and then hope that you have enough time to where you can hit them with the last hit of EX Beyblade. Now on hit, because Gotenks' beam got buffed, you can actually get a full combo off of this, and in a lot of situations, you can just go into Ghost Oki from here, which is super useful. You did not used to be able to do that with Gotenks. And on block, I do have to just say, this move is extremely punishable. So if you are doing this on someone, you have to either cancel it into something or use an assist. You can't just do this move raw because you will get hit by a medium and explode, it'll not be fun. Yeah, this move is dangerous, do not do it raw. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about, Gotenks' biggest tool in the game. Again, in my opinion, this is Gotenks' most important thing to learn. You have to learn this if you play Gotenks, otherwise you are not getting enough out of the character. Now guys, Ghost Oki is really fucking easy. It's not that complicated. Okay, I just wanna tell you guys, the Ghost Oki that I do is really simple. The most common version where you do the three ghosts and then you get a mix up after. Guys, don't be like me. I'm just lazy, okay? But I'm gonna learn this too, I promise. I actually would push for everyone to do the version of this that does not require you to do a JL. Because this is completely safe to any kind of reversal uh, reversal level 3, reversal DP, and a lot of character specific things it beats out. One of the biggest things is UI Goku. He has his uh, character specific reversal where he just teleports and then hits you. And a lot of the times if you're doing just the JL variation, you'll have to be aware of that and like wait for UI Goku to try to do something. But if you just learn this version, there is nothing anyone can do about it. They cannot uh, guard cancel, they can't reversal you, it's so much better. Now I am still practicing this, like I have not mastered this yet. I'm trying to learn it and do it consistently, and I will tell you guys the way that I use. Since I use a pad, I, I, I can't really speak on like a specific method if you are using a box or a stick or something else that's weird, a steering wheel. Now I've heard some people say that they 
hold the actual light, special, and heavy buttons. Um, you can do that, but it hurts my fingers. So the method that I use is actually holding light, heavy, and my uh, trigger button or whatever you have as a super dash button. The trigger performs super dash just by doing the macro of heavy and special. So if you're already holding heavy, when you do this, it will just activate a special because heavy is already being held. So if you are holding all three of this and you release heavy, you won't see anything here, but because it can negative edge, releasing heavy will release special. And then from there, you just release light and heavy. And I don't mean to look like a fucking gremlin or anything, but I do this by clawing. So I will have my index finger on light, my thumb on heavy, and my middle finger on the trigger. Um, <laughs> don't ask me why that version doesn't hurt my fingers. I do like claw grips in a lot of games. It's really weird. But anyways, whether you choose to do this variation or just the variation that has you doing JL, I'm going to break Ghost Oki down super simply this is not complicated i promise so if you do the jl variation when you start ghost Oki, you're gonna hold down special and then you release special to when your opponent is waking up after you release special you jump in and do light and then heavy and if you time it right the ghost should hit around like that and then after you do that you get a high low and that's how you do ghost Oki. that's literally it that's that's and if you're doing the other variation you start by holding all three you hold light heavy and the trigger or you can just hold the special button if you don't want fucking gremlin fingers same thing when you see your opponent wake up you hit them with special ghost or the trigger ghost if you're holding the trigger and then instead of pressing light and then heavy you're gonna release light and then heavy and then you do the same thing you just get a high low 50 50 should be stated you have to get the high low with uh, jump in JL. You can't use JM. If you do that, then you will activate your medium ghost. And that's literally how you do ghost Soki. That's the- that's it. Now, there's obviously more than that, but that's the basic gist of how you do it. After you do that, you're gonna have this little medium ghost in the back of you. And you could do a couple of things with this. The main one that I do is full auto combo into calling medium ghost. And after auto combo, I either dash in and get a high or do 2M as low. Now, technically, this is not a 50-50, but I, 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 I really don't care. It hits people all the fucking time. I'm gonna continue to use it until it no longer works. But if you wanna get an actual 50-50, you can do that too using Super Dash. The thing about using Super Dash is, obviously, you're not gonna be able to jail into Super Dash so your opponent is going to have an opportunity to either swing back at you or uh, reflect here. Some other things you can do, if you just do medium or like a 6M, your ghost will hit your opponent before your 6M will. So you're not going to get a combo off of this. But if you hold medium while doing your 6M, then you can delay your ghost. And you can basically get a solo 6M combo by doing this. Uh, the same thing can be applied to Dragon Rush. Depending on the range, if you just do Dragon Rush, then your Ghost might hit your opponent before your Dragon Rush does. But like 6M, if you just hold Dragon Rush instead, then this will never happen to you. But you could use this to your advantage in a fucking uh, Galaxy Brain play to do a fake Dragon Rush. And if your opponent tries to take that, then they might just end up getting hit by the ghost. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. It's not that difficult. It's just overhyped is difficult. But if you just practice it, you can get it fairly easily. Now, one thing to note, if your opponent mashes reflect, they can get around this Oki the same way they would like any level one Oki, like Zamasu or Piccolo. But where Gotenks differs from those characters is he does not have to do his Oki instantly. He can wait and bait out a reflect from the opponent. And not only can he bait out a reflect, he can do this at any stage of the Oki. So if you do your first ghost and you see they're reflecting, now you can try to bait out their next reflex. Or if they do all three reflects and they're gonna reflect once you're right next to them, you can bait out that and hit them while they're right next to you, which is really amazing. 
Or you can just wait a second before you do a meaty ghost and try to bait out their initial reflect. Gotenks just has more ways to threaten your opponent reflecting than anyone else with level one Oki. Okay, now really quick, I just want to go over. What beats Ghost Oki? A lot of the things that you might initially think would beat Ghost Oki just do not work. Like this, Janemma's little whatever thing, it does not beat Ghost Oki. These are considered supers still, so anything that doesn't beat a super won't beat Ghost Oki. This includes things like Vegito and Gogeta's counters, moves that are Key Blast invincible are not super invincible so they will not beat this. Even things that are beam invincible, like Zamasu's 2H or Jiren's 2H, they will not beat ghosts. Something would have to be fully projectile invincible to beat these. And even then, it would have to be fully projectile invincible on frame one in order to beat these. And there are not really things like that in the game besides DP, and that is why I really, really push that you all try to learn the variation that doesn't use JL, because then you are immune to all reversals. Now one really weird character specific option that I wanna talk about, let me show you guys real quick. There is one character that actually has something that is really strong against Ghost Oki. So as I said, counters do not beat Ghost Oki. They just lose to it because they have to be immune to supers. And most counters are not immune to supers. Most counters. Cooler is the only character in this game that I know that has a counter super that can be used against this super. If you try to do Ghost Oki against Cooler and he level threes, it actually does work against you. This is the only super in the game that I know of that can just straight up beat Ghost Oki. Which I, I, I think that's kind of cool that like any super exists like that because like I can't think of any other option that just does that. And it doesn't really matter if you save jump this because this is not a hit. This is a command grab. Not to say that this just straight up beats Ghost Oki. Uh, one thing in particular that you can do against this is 2H it. The unfortunate thing is that if you do 2H it, it will cause him to be hit by one of your ghosts. So you're not gonna get a uh, meter off of this and it's gonna scale the damage a lot, but it does counter this. But not only that, you don't even have to wait in the air. If you think you can react to him doing his level three super, then when you see it happen, you can backdash in the air preemptively and then this will no longer hit you. Alternatively, if you do not think you can react to this, then you can just vanish out of it. Um, obviously you need meter to do this, but you do have counterplay. But interesting thing, you can't just ignore this. You have to do something to counter it, but you do have counterplay. Um, the best thing I would suggest is just doing a meaty ghost and just waiting a split second before you do anything else. Because a lot of the time this can be used to bait out more than just reversal level three. Um, if someone is reflecting, Waiting will beat the Reflect too. Some people like to vanish out of Ghost Oki, so you can wait that out and punish with a 2H. And the Meaty Ghost will still lock someone down so that they can't just jump out of this. And you will still have your two ghosts that are necessary for getting your 50-50. Okay, next I'm just gonna talk about Gotenks pressure and his block strings. Now earlier I said that you're almost never gonna end a block string with Gotenks. You can if you want, but the fact that he has EX punches is just so useful because it can almost always be your turn. Whatever you're doing, you can jail into miracle punches and now it's your turn again. And paired with the fact that you can fully charge your heavy punch or another way that I think is really useful for recharging assists. And this is something that's not only useful for this, but just like a good option is dash up and wait after doing EX punches. If you dash block after EX punches, it actually beats a lot of stuff that people would use to beat this because you're plus one here. So a lot of people will try to do something like reversal level three or DP after this, or just like reflect or something. Or a lot of people will also just not want to challenge you because they know you are plus one. So if you dash block here, not only are you 
uh, punishing a lot of stereotypical options that people would choose to try to beat this, but you are also doing something where you are waiting in a situation to where your opponent probably does not want to press a button. And because you are dash blocking, you are also going to be safe from your opponent just swinging here. And you are recharging your resources in the process of doing all of this. But as far as a general block string goes, um, Gotenks doesn't have any moves that themselves can be used as a mix tool. And one of the interesting things about him is he can really change where he resets his pressure. The main thing to use is punches into punches. You can do that. You can do, again, punches into Dai Dai Missile Barrage into punches, into punches. Gotenks has okay stagger tools, but the fact that you don't even need to stagger to reset your pressure, I really feel EX punches are gonna be better in most situations. But obviously, you can't just do a basic block string forever. So how do you mix your opponent with Gotenks? Well, I'll talk about a couple of like small tricks because Gotenks has a lot of small tricks for fighting your opponent and trying to mix them. But there are two main ones that I would suggest. There is one for when your opponent is out of the corner and one for when your opponent is in the corner. If your opponent is in the corner, and this probably isn't surprising to some people, but the biggest thing that I would suggest is super dash plus assist as a mix tool. If you don't know how to do super dash plus assist, you do your assist and then you super dash. With certain characters, you do your assist first and then super dash. With certain characters, you super dash and then do your assist. But basically, you call your assist to where they would hit after your super dash connects and you are trying to jail from your super dash into your assist into doing a high low 50-50 where you either just do a low or you do a high. That is a true 50-50. Your opponent has to guess and it is the best form of mix that I think Gotenks has, in my opinion. It does require assists, which is kind of a big deal. I honestly feel like Gotenks is so much better if he has assists than if he doesn't have assists. But because Gotenks is so good at recharging his assists, this isn't really that big of a problem for him. He's really fine if he has to recharge his assists, but if he is playing without an assist, he has such a difficult time mixing an opponent in the corner. The second mix tool is if your opponent is outside of the corner. I really feel like this is the mix to prioritize doing and learning. And that is literally just EX Beyblade. EX Beyblade Raw can become a 50-50. They cannot react to what side you're gonna hit them on. But the really difficult thing is how you have to use EX Beyblade. In order to mix someone properly with EX Beyblade, you can't just hug their body. You have to do EX Beyblade in a way that leaves a gap on your opponent. But obviously, EX Beyblade is an air move. So if your opponent 2Hs, then you might just get hit here. But 2H is not air invincible on frame 1. It is only air invincible on frame 4. So in order to mix with this perfectly and not be able to get counter hit by a 2H, you have to do this in a way where you leave anywhere from a one frame to a three frame gap on your opponent. That is the only way to mix with this and not be punishable. And it is not easy to do this. It's definitely difficult, but you can do it. And that's the important part. This is one of the biggest things for me with Gotenks. Mastering this trick will make your mix with Gotenks so much stronger than it would otherwise. It's just really difficult to leave a perfectly timed gap with this move that both leaves an opening to where they can get mixed, but also has a small enough opening to where they can't 2 eat you. Now, obviously characters can do things like reversal level three or reflect, but that does not ignore the mix. They still have to guess as to which side you are gonna hit them on. And there are certain characters that have options that are strong at fighting left rights like this, but even these tools, you can do the mix against and still be able to bait out. I cannot stress how useful this is for mixing your opponent. But again, Gotenks has a lot of like small tricks for mixing your opponent. Now, as far as uh, your level three mix goes, the only real requirement is that they are outside of the corner. And the actual mix is the same as using raw EX Beyblade. You either go to the same side or you cross them up. Honestly, this Oki is really simple. 
there's no specific trick to it besides just having good EX Beyblade control. I already talked about same side Beyblade, but another thing you can do is dash over someone and do ambiguous cross up Beyblade. Um, this can be really difficult because like it hits really fast and you can't really tell whether a Gotenks is gonna do same side Beyblade or cross up Beyblade. But again, all of these will lose to your opponent doing 2H. And that's why I think jump back Key Blast is really useful because obviously it beats 2H. Now when you're using Jump Back Key Blast, there's a few things you can do. You can obviously just pressure someone normally after. Um, if you think someone is going to super dash this, you can go straight into EX Punches and from there you're going to be plus on block. Um, you can do Key Blast into Jump Back Key Blast and this will be Reflect or someone just mashing on you because a lot of people mash on this. If you super dash before you do the Key Blast, then you will be able to cross someone up from the opposite side. Um, but even if you don't, you can do like bazonkers shit like that. But that's more EX Beyblade being an amazing mix tool than Key Blast. Other small tricks are medium Beyblade into light Beyblade. This I don't really suggest. It is useful to break out every now and again. Um, if you do it really quickly, then it will hit same side, but if you wait a little bit, then it will hit cross up. And if you wait extra long, you can actually do medium Beyblade and then reverse your input to light Beyblade when you're on the other side. And what this does is makes you go back to the same side. So you're either doing same side or cross up or an even longer delayed same side. But the problem with this is anything you do, your opponent can 2H you, which is just very risky. You don't have to do the actual mix, but I really like mixes where you don't have to forego the mix in order to be safe. Other things that I think are useful are, uh, Gotenks can actually do the Gogeta 4 thing, where you go back to the same side, which is uh, really cool in my opinion. Again, EX Beyblade is like the best mix tool. So. In order to be able to mix people with Gotenks, I really suggest you work on how well you can control EX Beyblade. Because it is pretty fucking unwieldy sometimes. Uh, Shout Cancel on its own has really heavy startup, but you can use this and then get an overhead after this. This will basically never mix someone because they can always react to this. But what is interesting is that because you can Tiger Knee Shout Cancel, if you do this fast enough, this version leaves you grounded. And it can be really hard to tell which version your opponent does just like in the heat of the moment. This is pretty gimmicky though. Like I'll, I'll say it's a gimmick, you know? But like fuck you, I, if you have like a hundred gimmicks. This is especially true in Sparking where you have the ability to tiger knee things even just while your opponent is blocking. And you can also just go into your air version, but again, this is gimmicky. Uh, another just small trick that I want to bring up is uh, when you do J2S instantly off of the ground, no matter how high you are off of the ground, you will always be able to dash forward afterwards. And after dashing, you will always be able to get a JL out. What this means is if you call an assist after doing Key Blast, then you will get a 50-50. Unlike something like Super Dash plus Assist, which is not gonna work mid-screen just because Gotenks 2L doesn't go like Omega far. Because the Key Blast sends you so far forward, this will always work mid-screen. Um, it's just obviously gonna be harder to set up than something like, you know, Super Dash plus Assist. But this is a useful mix tool. Obviously, the opponent can reflect the Assist because you're hitting them with a key last. But this just happens incredibly fast, so it's useful. It's useful because it'll catch people off guard and you should just have as many tricks as possible. Also, a useful way to mix if you just have one of these like fast, unreactable assists is just doing something like jump into assist call. Again, this isn't as easy to set up as obviously something like super dash plus assist, but this is really useful because once you jump and call your assist, if your opponent hasn't done anything, they can't react to the assist. The actual assist is unreactable. And if you're using something like a DP assist, 
then this will also be certain mash options from your opponent. It's just really useful. Okay, now to go into Gotenks combos. Now, before I talk about Gotenks combos, I want to talk about two things. The first thing I want to talk about is which combos you should do. In my opinion, if you are doing a combo with Gotenks, you should almost always use both of your assists in the combo in order to get as much damage as you can. And this is because after you do a combo with Gotenks, your main goal is to try to get the opponent in the corner and hit them with Ghost Oki. And the main benefit to this is that if you're doing Ghost Oki, your assists will start to recharge. If you see in the top left corner, while I was doing Ghost Oki, my assists were recharging. And that will happen even if you do your Ghost Oki naturally, your assists will recharge. So basically, you're using your assists for free. As long as you do everything properly, you're using your assists for no cost. So it really doesn't make sense to like save your assist for anything because you're getting it back for free. And the second thing I want to talk about is this. This is a combo killer. Be very careful. So in one of the previous patches, um, I want to say it was the same patch that Gotenks had his EX punches bugged and he was doing like incredible damage because they weren't scaling his combo properly. They actually nerfed the scaling. If I just do a simple combo like this, nothing special, it can showcase the properties of this move. That combo did 4,094 points of damage. Now instead of doing Beyblade, I'm just gonna do a second punches, and all of a sudden, my combo does so much more points of damage. And that is because Light Beyblade, wherever you use it in the combo, will artificially scale your combo to do less damage. So I really suggest, please, do not do something like this. If you don't know what to do, do not use Light Beyblade. In most situations, you can either do punches into punches and then call your assist, or you can do something like just hitting them back to the ground. Even something like that will do a lot more damage than using Light Beyblade in a combo. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people just don't know that this gives your combo increased scaling, but it does, so try to skip out on using this whenever you can. If it's like an emergency, obviously, like if you're super high in the air and you don't think there's any way for you to combo besides using Light Beyblade, yeah, obviously you can do it, but in most situations, try to avoid using this. Now, there are two main different rejumps that Gotenks has. The first kind is rejumps where you cancel Light Beyblade into your Shout Cancel. The second kind just has you doing Light Beyblade in the air and having the full move connect, but doing it at a specific height that allows you to combo afterwards. So the first kind of rejump has you doing Light Beyblade and then canceling right as you get to the ground. And if you do that cancel, you should be able to link a JL right afterwards. This, in my opinion, is the better version of the two rejumps. Uh, it's easier, it'll do more damage consistently. However, the main benefit to the other version of Shout Cancel is that it will continue to combo for a lot longer. So in most situations, I suggest using the first version of Shout Canceling at the start of your combo, and if you want to get another rep, then using the second version to finish your combo. Now, here's a basic BNB that you can use off of any starter that utilizes Shout Cancel. Whenever you can, you're gonna wanna use your beam in a Shout Cancel combo just because it provides such good corner carry. That version is good off of any starter, but if you land a 2M and you wanna get a little more damage, here's another variation that you can use. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing this combo unless you either think you're gonna kill or it just happens accidentally because you land a heavy. But if you do get a heavy, then here's a custom rejump combo that Gotenks can get. Now, 
Gotenks doesn't have any way of getting a hard knockdown with a move, and he also doesn't have an air level 1 super. So if you want to do your level 1 super after a long combo like this, and you don't have a knockdown tool, um, what you want to do is end your combo in Light Beyblade. And then at the very end of Light Beyblade, you could cancel into your Ghost Super. The timing isn't hard or anything, uh, you just want to make sure you don't do it too early before the last hit connects. You want to do it right as that last hit connects. Gotenks also has a rejump combo that he can do off of his 2H. Um, I would rather suggest, if you can, doing a 2H combo that utilizes your assists, but if you can't do that at the moment, or you just don't want to, then here's a rejump combo off of his 2H. Now this combo in particular is a little more difficult than the other ones, simply because this rejump is not auto-timed. You actually have to time it yourself. Whereas other rejumps, a lot of them have you just holding the button for the entire duration. This has you doing just a couple hits of punches into uh, your Beyblade in order to get the proper timing. Everything before that though, you just do as fast as you can. You do your J5M into punches as fast as you can. That much is auto time. This is the only really hard part of the combo. Gotenks also has a Vanish combo rejump, and that is this. And I just want to mention that off of any Shout Cancel rejump, you are able to side swap by doing Light Light into a slightly delayed 5M. And that looks like this. Now as far as assist combos go, this really is assist dependent. What you do here isn't too strict. Um, all I suggest is do whatever you can to hit your opponent back to the floor twice. And if you want to incorporate some beams in order to corner carry, you can do that. Doing this will always net you more damage than even the most optimal combo that doesn't use your assists. So I really can't stress enough, but come up with something that utilizes both of whatever two assists that you have well, because that is going to be the combo that you're going to do in most cases. Something that hits them back to the ground and doesn't use your smash property. That's the main thing. You want to save your smash property for right here. That way you can always go into Ghost OP. And remember, off of any combo you can, you're going to want to go into Ghost OP. Now, Gotenks also has a rejump off of his Dragon Rush. Um, in my opinion, this is probably the hardest rejump, Gotenks rejump, to be able to do consistently. There's actually no set way to do this combo, but here's how I do it. Um, the main problem here, this is the only rejump that I'm iffy to suggest people try to learn. Everything else to this point, even the 2H rejump, I think can be done consistently. I don't know if I suggest trying to do this combo. If Like, you can, if you want to. If you think you're uh, built different and you could just do it consistently, then like, who am I to stop you? But I don't even do this combo consistently. What I do whenever I can is either just the normal, basic, super easy doing this, or if I have an assist, um, I will combo off of the assist and then do something using that. But I actually, I pretty much never do this reach out because it's really too inconsistent for me. Okay, but now we're gonna get into the big stuff. The corner combos for Gotenks are 
probably his biggest source of damage in the game. But it's important to recognize that there are two different variations of every corner combo that you have to learn. There's one for if you're just doing like a normal corner combo, but you also have to learn what corner combo you have to do if you have ghosts out on the screen. So first off, if you do want to go into Ghost Toki afterwards and you don't have a Sisuse, you can do something like this. And that will set up the proper position for Ghost Toki. The only slightly hard part about this is this part right there where you do JM into JH. That is not auto time. You have to delay that a slight bit. And it can actually vary a little bit from character to character. But if you just practice it, you should be able to get it consistently. And if you don't even want to have to worry about like inconsistency, you can just skip the heavy altogether. And do something like that instead. It'll be a little less damage, but it's more consistent. So, But again, you can always get more damage if you have assists. No matter the situation, you should always find a way to use your assists in your combo. But honestly, the most important corner combo, and probably combo in general, that you're going to learn for Gotenks is one that just requires you to kill. Because if your opponent is in the corner and you get a hit on them, if you've done any hit, you can probably kill them. Obviously, it depends on how much meter you have and what characters you're using, but you can probably kill them. Here is the combo that I do that I have found to be the max possible damage for my team. Now, as you can see, that nearly kills. If you have a single bar, all of a sudden, that combo will kill. Gotenks can just squeeze so much damage out of a corner combo. It's actually insane. Not only that, he squeezes so much meter out of a corner combo. Now, there are a few things to dissect in the combo, and I really want to talk about these points more than the combo itself, because these points will help you create your own combos and just understand the character better. First of all, the new shout loops that use uh, light Beyblade into beam will also let you do more damage for the sole fact that you can do things like J2H into J5H, uh, stuff like that would not have been possible before because you would have had to have a specific combo that leaves them at a specific height. But since you don't have to worry about how high they are, you can pretty much just wail on them with like the strongest moves before you send them back down. So what I do here is J2H in a J5M in a J5H. And then I do my Beyblade in the beam. But the next part of this combo is actually pretty precise. When you do your Beyblade in a beam, a lot of the time you can't just mash your auto combo because they are too high in the air. But fortunately, your beam actually has enough hit stun to where you can slightly delay your auto combo. And if you have the right timing to slightly delay the auto combo, it will connect 100% of the time. But there is an easier version of combos like this where you don't do that, you just do JL into 5M and then do some combo like this. And if you do that, it will always work no matter what height the character is at. It's a lot more consistent and a lot easier. It doesn't do that much less damage. So if you wanna do this easier version, you can just do that instead. But the most damage that you can get comes from doing auto combo after this beam. You just have to slightly delay it in order to get the timing consistently. Finally, the last slightly difficult part of this combo comes from doing the tag out combo. Um, now this is something that will require a bit of experimentation on your part. I do that old school tag out combo instead of a combo that uses Gotenks' new routes of being able to cancel specials like this 
just because Baby in particular can do so much damage from the Die Die Missile Barrage tag combo to where he does more than Gotenks' new route. But obviously, this will not be the case for every character in the game. There will be a lot of characters that don't get very much off of this Beyblade into Die Die Missile Barrage. A lot of characters will only be able to get like a Dragon Run, and that's all. But some characters are going to be able to get a lot off of this. So this is really character specific. But if you are playing a character that does not get very much off of this Light Beyblade into Die Die Missile Barrage, then instead of doing that, you're just going to want to do Light Punches into Die Die Missile Barrage and the Light Punches into Medium Beyblade. And when you do Medium Beyblade, you're going to tag out and then do Dragon Rush. Now, something important to note in a lot of these super high damaging combos, if you have max out the combo, then these second Miracle Punches will actually whiff halfway through. Because of that, I suggest whenever you're doing like a max out combo, don't even guess, just do light punches in a die down missile barrage, and then do light punches in a medium Beyblade super quickly. Just do like a few hits of light punches, just like that. You don't have to cut out the light punches, you can always get at least like one or two hits of them, but just cut it really short. Now I said you would have to have different corner combos depending on whether you had your ghosts out or not. But you actually have to have more than just one combo for a ghost being out. If you just hit someone with your normal mix-up, then what you're going to want to do is your full auto combo into Galactic Donuts. And once you do that, as soon as the Galactic Donuts like connects, you want to hit medium. And you do that so that the medium ghost whiffs on your opponent and doesn't uh, artificially scale your combo and give you meter penalty. And after that, there are different combos that I could suggest, some easy, some hard. Uh, they're based on what we just talked about. Doing that shout into auto combo will always net you the highest possible damage. But again, it's inconsistent and hard to do. So if you want to do something pretty consistent and easy, you can just do uh, your shout into JL into 5M and do something like this. But if you do want to get the highest possible damage, you're gonna have to do this slightly difficult auto combo after your shout. Now, what if they get hit by a ghost? Well, for one, you're going to build 0 meter for this combo, so just keep that in mind. If they get hit by the ghosts, you'll see no matter what happens, I'm not building meter anymore. But what I suggest here is if you see that they get hit, just super dashing, you can also just jump and hit them with a light after. But I like super dash in particular because if they up tech when you do ghost oki and they still get hit, super dash will just always hit them no matter what. And after you do that, you want to do a single hit of JL and the light Beyblade, and then bring them back to the ground and do your beam again. You want to hit them back to the ground, and then continue the combo with the medium ghost. Now, unfortunately, another thing that happens when they get hit by the ghosts is you're not able to use any smash properties anymore. So I'm gonna 2 h them, nothing happens. This means you're gonna have to use an assist or something in order to get good Oki. Or you can use this special trick that I use sometimes. Um, it's fake Oki. But I just do light Beyblade and then when they up tech, I will do medium Beyblade into light Beyblade. That will cover every single tech option, and if you time it properly, it will beat to H, because you will be doing the Beyblade Medi. And like we talked about earlier, if they up tech and they block it, you will be plus on block. Now, like I said before, um, if you get a hit with Ghost Oki and you've already gotten a hit, you're most likely gonna kill. 
But where that doesn't apply as much is when you get a hit with one of the actual ghosts because you're not building any meter anymore. So this is one of the situations where you're probably going to have to get another hit after this. Really quick, I just want to speak about a small thing that might either boost or limit your damage with Gotenks special tagging into other characters. And that's the actual uh, button setup you have. Because in order to get the maximum damage off of tagging into another character, you have to be able to tag instantly. And for this to be the case, you have to have some version of quick tag on. If you don't, you can still tag into another character and get like a dragon rush after this, but you're not going to be able to get the super like crazy max damage combos off of this. It's up to you whether you want to like change your whole control setup just to get like a little bit of extra damage. I was fortunate enough to just be using this button setup like naturally, so it just happened to work out for me. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. It'll just be a little bit of extra damage on your combos. Lastly, I really want to show you guys something amazing, okay? I will push for this forever, but I really suggest that you guys have a character on your team that can allow you to do Ghost Oki plus an assist. Why do I suggest this? Because a lot of the things that I talked about to where you have to do like this specific route in order to get Ghost Oki, those no longer apply if you can do assist plus Ghost Oki. What is assist plus Ghost Oki? Well, as you guys know, as it is right now, you cannot do backdash into Ghost Oki anymore because your opponent can vanish out of this. However, what happens if you have an assist that can cover your opponent even as you backdash? If that's the case, all of a sudden, you can do Ghost Oki even after backdashing. This is amazing because it allows you to loop Ghost Oki. Because if you have an assist that can lock them down on wake up, and another assist that you can use to get a Dragon Rush, all of a sudden, you can do Ghost Oki as much as you want. Now, this is not just an automatic, oh, now you have old school Ghost Oki back. This loses to a lot of reversal level threes. Not every character has a reversal level three that beats this though. Like just on this team, uh, Cooler doesn't have a reversal level three that beats this. Beerus doesn't have a reversal level three that beats this. And even if a character does, they have to have three meter. So if you get like some hit round start and then put your opponent into Ghost Oki and that Ghost Oki does not kill, now it does not matter because you have a way to get Ghost Oki a second time, which I think is really amazing. Maybe you think that's stupid and not cool, but I think that's like incredible and super useful for the character. Now, I know you guys want to be able to TOD your opponent off of anything. So really quick, I just want to bring up a new technique that Gotenks has as of the last patch, and that is uh, doing your 5H into your beam. If you do any medium in the 5H into your beam and cancel it into sparking at the very last second, your sparking will whiff but you will be able to connect a 2M. And guys, let me just tell you, this does so much damage. With any combo doing this, you will not only be able to kill super easily, but you will be doing so much extra damage and building so much extra meter. You will basically always overkill your opponent. Like, by so much. This is gonna do, like, Probably like 500 extra points of damage. Yeah. Honestly, if you just master 5H into Beam, into Whiff Sparking, into 2M, you will be able to TOD so many people super easily. It's not like you don't even have to do an amazing combo if you do this. If you just learn how to do that, you'll kill so many people. Now, for the final part of this video, I want to talk about both Gotenks' role and position on a team and who Gotenks pairs well with. As far as Gotenks' role, Gotenks gets a lot out of assists. He can recharge his assists with Ghost Oki or just 
good spots with your pressure, and he can use his assists for free in any combo. Gotenks has a lot of specific weaknesses that can be mitigated really well with good assists, and Gotenks has good combos without assists, but great combos with assists. Assists can also help Gotenks get Ghost Oki off of a lot more hits than he would be able to otherwise. And Gotenks' assists himself are good by all means, but they are not amazing. They're just really good solid assists. Because of all this, I really, really suggest that you either play Gotenks mid or point. I really do not suggest you play anchor Gotenks. Obviously you can. Gotenks can do good solo damage combos with shout cancels, and he has ways of mixing your opponent once he gets a hit with Ghost Oki and his level 3 super, but he has a much harder time getting a hit and a much harder time in neutral. Gotenks just gets so much more off of assists. Now, as far as point versus mid Gotenks, I feel like both have their own strengths and weaknesses. Point Gotenks in particular is really good because that is the best way to get Ghost Oki off of every single hit possible. You get a hit with Gotenks, you combo into an assist, and then you get Ghost Oki. And Ghost Oki is the best part of Gotenks and the best Oki in the game, in my opinion. So it's a really good way to make Gotenks' strengths more pronounced. And having consistent use of two assists is just that much better for Gotenks. Mid Gotenks, on the other hand, is really good because Gotenks as a character does not have the best neutral or the best mix. He has decent neutral and not the best mix, that's all I can say. But if you pair Gotenks with a character that has good neutral and good mix, then he then gives that character with amazing neutral and mix the best Oki in the game, which is amazing. The fact that Gotenks can give other characters the best Oki in the game. But this comes with a downside because if you're using a character and then you use Gotenks' assist to try to open your opponent up, all of a sudden, you can't tag into Gotenks for Ghost Oki because you've already used the assist. So it's like pros and cons, like would you rather have an easier time getting a hit but a harder time going into Ghost Oki? Or would you have a little bit harder of a time getting a hit but have almost guaranteed Ghost Oki? I can't say that either is definitively better. They're both good and both solid places for Gotenks. For a majority of my time playing Gotenks, I have played him point and recently I've been experimenting more with mid Gotenks, but either one of these are good options. But Gotenks' position isn't only decided by his strengths and weaknesses, it's also decided by the character you're pairing him with. So who are good characters to pair well with Gotenks? Well again, Gotenks' main thing that he wants is Ghost Oki. So, characters that can combo well into Ghost Oki are amazing for Gotenks. So, characters with a special move that counts as a launcher, that also sends an opponent super far from one side of the stage to the other are really good. Um, characters like Vegito have this with his legs, or Teen Gohan with his legs. Some characters are really good at racking up a lot of damage before they tag into Gotenks, with loops or something, or just a high damaging combo, like Krillin. Or, some characters aren't always good at doing a lot of damage, but if they're in the corner, they can do some kind of loop, and after doing the loop, still tag into Gotenks. Characters like Base Vegeta and 18 can do this. Gotenks also needs a second double jump in order to get Ghost Oki properly. And there are certain characters who have a certain dive kick special move, like Beerus or 21 or Broly or Baby, that refreshes your double jump. So these characters can just let you go into Ghost Oki that much more often. Off of a stray hit, no matter what, you can always get your double jump back and still go into Ghost Oki. There are also certain characters that can get a lot more damage than others at the end of a Gotenks combo. Characters like Super Baby 2 can get a lot of extra damage at the end of a combo. Or some characters, or some characters like Z Broly or Zamasu can multi-super. Z Broly can do his slow level three and Zamasu can do his Blades of Judgment super. And those can give you a lot of extra damage at the end of a combo, especially because Gotenks on his own has weak supers. There are also certain assists that really benefit Gotenks. In my opinion, one of Gotenks' biggest problems is anti-airing people. So having an anti-air assist or just a DP assist 
or some kind of defensive assist can be really beneficial for go tanks. Characters that also have some kind of full screen assist or neutral assists can help go tanks a lot because he doesn't have the best of neutral so some kind of full screen big assists can really help him out. As far as combos go, Gotenks can combo with basically any assists in the game, so he can really utilize some more obscure assists like Big Bang Attack or Kid Buu Armball. Even this can help Gotenks a lot because Gotenks can use it normally in combos and it helps Gotenks because he can really struggle to mix certain characters. Funny thing, um, back when GT Goku was at like the height of his power, I really like theorized for a long time that the strongest team in the game was Gotenks, Kid Buu, and GT Goku. But then uh, GT Goku got nerfed, so. What I would not suggest is assists that have really low block stun. And this is because Gotenks in particular really wants to have an assist that can help him get super dash plus assist. So this is just really limiting for Gotenks being able to mix characters. For the same reason, I'm really iffy on Key Blast based assists. Um, this is just because, uh, again, you want to be able to use super dash plus assist in any situation you can. So these are just going to make it that much harder for you to consistently open up your opponent. But I want to speak about the best assist in the entire game for Gotenks, in my opinion, is blue Goku dive kick assist. This is because this assist causes the opponent to be put into sliding knockdown. And if you pair this with Gotenks, he is able to get Ghost Oki off of any single combo in the game. Because he can do any combo that he wouldn't be able to get Ghost Oki off of. Even a Dragon Rush combo where you do the, the loops. He can do his whole combo and then call Blue Goku Assist. And the Blue Goku Assist will connect no matter how much you've done in the combo. And you can backdash with Gotenks and still have enough time to call out your ghosts. Blue Goku, in my opinion, is honestly a really good character that pairs with Gotenks. He can also go into Ghost Oki decently well. And in the corner specifically, he can do certain routes that allow him to do like loops. And then after he does all these loops and gets a bunch of damage, he can tag into Ghost Tanks and still get Ghost Oki. Some other characters that just pair really well with Gotenks. Baby, in particular, really just gives Gotenks everything he wants. He has a great assist to help Gotenks in neutral and for like weird knee situations. Um, he has a good way of tagging into Gotenks with his dive kick. And he has an anti-air command grab that sends the opponent in the opposite direction. So he can also just DHC into Gotenks level 3. He gets a lot of extra damage off of Gotenks' corner combos just by his air key blast thing into his anti-air command grab. And he can use his 6H to help give Gotenks mix while he's tagging Gotenks in which is incredible. Zamasu is another character, in my opinion, that pairs really well with Gotenks. Um, he has uh, good ways of going into Ghost Oki. He can do a lot of extra damage off of Gotenks doing his Dai Dai Missile Barrage in the corner into Zamasu Super, which is really crazy because Gotenks does so much damage with his corner combos and Zamasu does so much damage with his level one super, it just, it's it does so much damage. And Zamasu's assist is so good for Gotenks. It's really incredible. The big slash beam-like assist just covers so much space and is amazing for Gotenks. Team Gohan is another character that pairs really well with Gotenks. He has one, an assist that is super good for Gotenks. Anti-air assist and DP assist are really helpful for Gotenks because he doesn't have amazing defensive options or anti-air options. His medium legs are also really helpful because he can do a combo and then use medium legs and then it sends the opponent super far to the corner, basically always letting Gotenks get corner carry into Ghost Oki. But not only that, Team Gohan in particular is the only character I know in the game that has this. He can do his full like combo, whatever, and after he does that in the corner, he can do his five hit combo, like ch -ch 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 -ch, and then do vanish into medium kicks and tag Gotenks in and Gotenks will be in the perfect position to get Ghost Oki. And that's really good because 
it does a lot of extra damage and the five hit combo move on its own builds like almost a whole bar of meter. So where other characters have to have these like specific routes to go into Ghost Oki, Team Gohan can forgo all of that and just do his normal full damaging combo and then after all of that still go into Ghost Oki, which is really amazing. Not a lot of characters can do that. Jiren is another character I think is really good. Point Jiren and mid Gotenks is a crazy combo. Jiren is really good in neutral and now he can open people up well and he can go into Ghost Oki really easily with his combos. He can do a really high damaging combo and still go into Ghost Oki afterwards. And Jiren gets a lot of extra damage at the end of Gotenks combos from his J2H into like whatever whatever. And Jiren's assists are just pretty decent for Gotenks. Lu Gogeta is another character. He gets a lot of extra damage at the end of Gotenks combos just like by being blue Gogeta. And both of his assists are really good for Gotenks for both reasons. One is a good neutral assist, which helps Gotenks a lot. And the other is a good anti-air assist, which helps Gotenks a lot. He can tag into Ghost Oki really well. And he has his EX move that always gives sliding knockdown, which allows Gotenks to go into his level three Oki really well. That's a little expensive. Like you're spending four bars to get a level three mix, but it's not that expensive. Like Vegito does that same thing. Now, some characters that I would not suggest pairing with Gotenks. Um, Piccolo in particular, he has no real good way to go into Ghost Oki because his only way of going into Ghost Oki is with an air move that side swaps. So after you put someone into the corner, now you've side swapped and you can't go into Ghost Oki the same way unless you like spend a bar to vanish, which just spends extra resource where another character wouldn't have to. His assist is nice in neutral, but again, Gotenks really wants a character that allows him to do super dash plus assist. And even though Piccolo assist is really helpful for creating strong combos, Gotenks doesn't need an amazing combo assist. He already can do good combos with any assist in the entire game. Piccolo can actually use his uh, Hellzone grenade super after Gotenks tags him in with Dai Dai Missile Barrage but he can't get any hit beforehand, which just limits the damage that he can get uh, compared to a character like Zomasu, who can get so much damage just by tagging in from Gotenks. Uh, Trunks is another character that I don't think pairs well with Gotenks. Um, his assists are okay for Gotenks, but not amazing, especially his change of the future assist is really bad for Gotenks. He doesn't have a good way to go into Ghost Oki because his air specials either don't have a hitbox or they will use the property that Gotenks needs to spike them back to the ground. He doesn't get a lot of extra damage at the end of Gotenks combos, and Gotenks and Trunks really occupy like one of the same main strengths of having good level 3 Oki that requires the opponent to be taken out of the corner. So they really just don't need to be on the same team because they do the same thing. Like you don't need to have both of them. You can, if you want, like there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just Gotenks already occupies that role on a team. Hit is another character. Um, he really has no good way to go into Ghost Oki because he literally has no air special move, which is really unfortunate because his assist, I think, is amazing for Gotenks. Just because Gotenks does so well with a good defensive assist, but that's basically the biggest flaw a character can have is not being able to go into Ghost Oki properly. And Hit is probably the worst character in the game at going into Ghost Oki. But at the end of the day, you can play Gotenks wherever you want, however you want, with whoever you want. Really, I just wanted to share all this information with you guys because I really love this character. I think he's awesome. But you know, you can play him however you want. So if I said anything and you're like, I'm just gonna ignore you, by all means, play play Gotenks however you want. But yeah, I think I talked about everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. But if you have questions on anything in particular, um, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to respond to as many questions as I can. I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about, but I'm sure I missed something. Like, But yeah, that's all guys. Um, Thank you again for 1,000 subscribers, and I'll see you guys uh, never. I quit.